and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is your Reverend, Faith and Current Affairs. Welcome everyone to Irreverend Faith and Current Affairs. I'm Jamie Franklin, a vicar in the Church of England, and I'm joined today by my two other vicar colleagues, Revs, but not as you know them, Daniel French and Tom Ars Pelham. How are you doing, lads? Come on, let's doing go. Doing good. You. Let's go to you first. Doing Dan. much better than I have been the last few weeks. Yeah, you've been, so, you've, been un, you've been unwell with that flu-like influenza. Yeah. like and, and then I had the, seasonal illness these days. I hear. Yeah, yeah. Then I had the Wuhan variant last mm. week, which um, uh, entitled me to a period of meditation for a few days. Ah, the Chinese virus, mm. the lab leak, as thing. it was as it was once called by yeah. somebody somebody or other mm. that would be a, a, an interesting uh, uh what was that board game called trivial pursuit it'll be an interesting trivial pursuit question in years to come who which which uh larger than life uh lovable u.s president referred to covid19 as the chinese virus <laughs> uh yes indeed tom tom pelham good to see you how are you oh uh, all right thanks jamie yeah yeah um yeah i, I was thinking of you today because i got the old thurible out all right yeah, at, at a Why funeral. Oh, at a funeral. funeral. Yeah, well, someone asked, it's sort of Anglo Catholic sensibilities, and I and asked for holy water and a thurible. And I don't really do these things normally, but, you know, to, to the, uh, for the as Paul says, to the, to the Anglo Catholics, I became an Anglo Catholic, even though I am not an Anglo Catholic. Um, mm. Or something like that. Anyway, can't remember which. Letter. It always it um, confuses me why people have this sort of aversion to incense. I just think you know what's what's there to makes, accept. To? Makes my nose run. All right, okay, so it's not an ideological thing with you. It's you know, well, it's a fact. It's kind well, of snow, it's a real it's sort of snow snowflake. <laughs> like, oh, I don't like getting smoke in my nose. Oh, um, I don't like it. Oh. It's funny uh, that either extremities of Anglicanism have <laughs> smoke, isn't it? If you go to HTB, an HTB resource church, they have, the smoke, they have the smoke machine, you know, and the band coming out the smoke machine. Oh, and, yeah, um, that's not true. Yeah, that can't possible. Exactly. And uh, yeah. you, then you go to the other end, and uh, the thurible's thurible's the disco swinging. balls as well. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Maybe disco balls could be used at both. I don't know. Um, yeah, we, I, yeah. we wouldn't have a disco ball. Would you not? You'd no. have a chandelier maybe in, <laughs> in an Anglo Catholic church, not a disco ball. Honestly, that's just a joke. That's yes. literally a joke. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was quite good fun, though. Um, and, did, who did uh, it then? Who was swinging? Me. Was me. You, I, you I were doing it, it, were you? I did everything, basically. I, I trained a choir member very quickly to to just stand there, wafting it around. But, yeah. Did you get so polite that, Anglican coughs? No, well, I didn't use too much because, like the, the aforementioned, uh, I, I, I just it makes my nose stream. Uh, and oh, I bet, I bet that's a psychosomatic reaction because probably, yeah. this incense is, is actually that's true. Maybe it's just Anglo Catholic. It's not, it's not find, allergenic. It doesn't. I do find my eyes water when I get close to you as well. So maybe it's just Anglo Catholics. Um, might be, but um, yeah, Ooh. we went through. <laughs> we went, do you know we went, the Americans now sell a uh, a um, anti cough incense? Really, it's very sort of uh, American. <laughs> Come thing on, to Daniel. Do. It's it's a load of nonsense. Incense is not allergenic. It doesn't cause people to cough. It's it's a it's a it's a psychological reaction. Action when people see smoke, they think. Anyway, it's, it's, if you it's, combine it's, the two ch- two ends of the Church of England, you could have dry ice and a thermal. You could. Mm, it would be great. That would it? be, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, we did have that. We did. We um not because I wanted to, but we did have a um during the COVID time. We had one of those um what what are they like kind of a distiller which you hold in you hold in your hand and you turn it on and it's got a motor and it shoots out disinfected water into the air and it kind of creates a kind of haze. So we had that mixing with the. Uh, that's a bit strange, isn't it? What was um, that supposed to do? Disinfect surfaces. Okay, yeah. so so you you're supposed to be close to it though, whilst the sur- so they disinfected you and your your lungs as well, presumably. Presumably, I to be honest, Tom, I was not an advocate of. It. <laughs> really, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't oppose it because that wouldn't have been appropriate in my context. But it wasn't my idea. Um, but was it liturgically switched on? I mean, was there great a great British ritual? Did he put Did he put blessed water into it? Aspergingly uh, <laughs> dominated. <laughs> it, it could have replaced uh, the thurible quite easily. You could have had someone uh, at the front with it. Yeah, I was years the, years uh, ago, in the, the when uh, the first bird flu or whatever it was came along i I had an altar server who came up to me during the aspergers at the um moment at the at the eucharist with uh instead of water to wash my hands they came with a with one of these um pumps oh what like a like a dispenser 
yeah, um, <laughs> hand gel pump. And uh, it's very difficult to carry on the holy mysteries without getting the giggles. Uh, the lavabo. Um, Instead of yeah. the lavabo, he brought Lord you Lord Washington. Right, you know, I, I, still, I still use... Uh, pumps instead of water because I, I just do other it's, it's a way of not having to do the water stuff so I just use a pump instead <laughs> what during the service yeah yeah just just, just bizarre just, but, um, just, I think that sounds invalid actually mm. there's <laughs> nothing invalid. in the book of Irre- common prayer about washing your hands yes, <laughs> really. and then and then the child nothing not pumping. about washing it I don't but, I think there certainly is nothing about gelling your hands Tom yeah. Um, then then shall thou pumpeth the dispenser <laughs> into thine palm. Do you think uh, anyone's so, still listening, by the way? And rub it thine hands together <laughs> three times. Uh, all three listeners. Um, uh, so um, this is the first irreverent that we've done at the same time, Daniel, in an awful long time. Mm. Um, so it's good to see you. Uh, we, uh, I don't know what it was. You kept being... On sort of Ill. taxi, ill or taxi duty. Well, he's, yeah. been, he's doing a sabbatical as well, hasn't he? So. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, uh, and uh, so it's good to see you. Uh, we, we should we should do the scripture though, shouldn't we, Jamie? Yeah. We well, well I was going to say we should give. Well, let's let's do scripture first. Yeah. Let's just say we're going to talk about a few bits and pieces uh, today. Um, big news articles coming up. A little bit more about obviously stuff that's going on in the Church of England vis-a-vis same-sex blessing stuff to do with. Uh, Justin Welby and we've got some really interesting correspondence as well so do stick with us we're, we're going to cover a, a lot today uh, mm-hmm. it's not going to be all about the the Church of England although it's a serious issue that's going on at the moment so we are going to talk about that Church but as in the, well yeah the Church of England in general is a serious issue but yeah you're quite right Tom we, we should first turn to scripture we've been reading through little sections of uh, the book of but Philippians there was there was a, by the way there was a scandalous uh, I thought a scandalous slur on t- uh, telegram about the Lord's Prayer, which said the only bit that we could be confident with uh, in a reverend is, is is the Our Father, and after that, you know, uh, it all goes downhill. Uh, he said, mm-hmm. and I, you know, uh, so you know, I think we can do did this. Someone say that? Yeah, someone did say that. I was, it was in the context of uh, the non-binary gen, uh, non-gender binary God or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that we were talking about last week, but uh, so they were saying. Well, we they were saying the, the rest of the prayer. We can <laughs> no, the Our Father. I, th- I think I think for us, you know, I think it was taking uh, it was. Uh, it was insinuating that we were we were not very good at saying it. Um, so, oh. I, so <laughs> okay. Well, why don't uh, so let's get Daniel to do it? Yeah, why don't Daniel? Yeah, Daniel, Daniel, can you lead us in the Lord's prayer before we do our confidently? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Notice how Daniel left off the doxology there, Tom. I'm sure you noticed that. (laughs) I did. Did Did you listen to last week's episode, Daniel? No, I didn't. No, We, we had a lengthy debate about the doxology in the Lord's prayer. Tom has been, um, infiltrated by various modern ideas. Well, no, I, it's, it's an no, older. No, let's not get back. All right, okay, take it back. Take it back. <laughs> right. I didn't mean that. It's just a joke. The Vulgate doesn't have the dogs right, okay. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. But no, no, if you if you go to um, no. here we go. Actually, look what you've done. Laws, <laughs> a lot of my in-laws are Roman Catholic, so when when I go to when I've gone to mass with them, they don't have the doxology um, yeah. just before the just before communion. So it's very easy to uh, go into that sort of um, neutral mindset and forget so mm. apologies no 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 apologies necessary it's it's a it's a it's a diaphora <laughs> that's what people <laughs> always say when they want to move the conversation on in, in mm. churches i think anyway uh well, that, that would be an ecclesiastical matter ecumenical matter oh right. sorry that's right yeah ecumenical matter no what yeah. is it from uh yeah, get your father's, father's head, head right father's yeah, head, is, that will be ecum- an ecumenical matter yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah anyway look we've got to read this scripture now okay right let's do it in too many false starts here yeah. all right so i'll read it uh philippians 1 27 30 Again, this is the Apostle Paul speaking in prison. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you stand firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear omen to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict which you saw and now hear to be mine so we are quite a challenging mm. quite a challenging it fits quite nicely 
uh, with with some of the themes that we touched on with Rod Dreher, doesn't it? That sort of mm. idea of suffering, mm. uh, reclaiming suffering, yeah, um, for 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 Christ. Um, yeah. yeah, for those for those obviously who weren't at the um, at the live event, this was a big trope of his, isn't it? That it's big part of his "Live Not by Lies" book is that the uh, uh, the, the church needs to rediscover uh, to learn how to suffer well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. And um, to see it as part, a normal part of our faith. So I don't know, I kind of see a few sort of themes here. You've got um, Paul asking the Christians he's writing to, to stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, not being frightened by their opponents, by people who oppose them, and recognizing that suffering that comes to them as a result um, is a participation in the suffering of Christ and in what it means to be a follower of Christ. So um, this is, I think, I sort of, I don't know about you chaps, but at the moment, every time I open the scripture, uh, particularly I find this in morning prayer, I sort of find myself relating it to the the situation we're facing at the moment in the Church of England. I know we I know we said we're going to talk about that later in the in the mm. episode, but I do find passages like this very very. Um, comforting and and reassuring that and and i suppose motivating as well because you know this is what we're called to do isn't it we're, we're called to join with other faithful believers to um to be to be united in our proclamation and defense of the faith and to recognize that as a part of that uh we will likely incur suffering uh we may incur marginalization in our context we may incur um loss uh, potentially loss of job certainly loss of opportunity potentially even loss of position um but that this is a participation in 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 the suffering of christ and it is to be expected in in the course of a normal christian life so uh, i know and, and that contrast doesn't it with a a lot of um what is a de facto western christianity in, in our consumer culture which is that uh it's all sweeties and confectionery uh you know where smoke machines yeah, exactly, it, and smoke machines. Nice. <laughs> and um, but it, if if it's yeah, it may not on the tin outwardly be a prosperity gospel, but often the idea is of a a, a form of Christianity in which nothing bad happens to you. You know and that, that that it's all on the up and up, um, and that you know it's about nicey feelings. And well, there's a part of that that's true, but when uh, when the season changes uh, and we don't know how to suffer well and we can't even begin to conceive the idea of having solidarity with Christ in our suffering where we're in a, we're in a truly difficult position really where mm. we're somewhat disabled really in, in terms of uh, witnessing to the faith in it, mm. i think in any meaningful way mm. yeah mm. i agree what about this interesting, it's an interesting uh, phrase here when the Apostle Paul says, after this thing about being being firm in one spirit, not being frightened in anything. And then he says, this is a clear omen to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. It's almost like the courage of the faithful is an omen of the destruction of, of the wicked and those who oppose those who oppose God. I, I think that's, um, that's a... That's a great exhortation, isn't it? To have courage and, and unity in the faith, that this is actually something which is a sign to unbelievers of um of of the reality of your faith. You know, courage is a corollary of faith, if you like. Um Well certainly if you if it you know, I th I think I think in the, the as as it takes more courage to to and I think it will take more and more courage to live out a, a, a Christian life in, in this world. Um uh then then you know it's it's that it's, it's what you're doing that's correct showing courage isn't it and that's showing that you actually it actually means something to you and i think there's it's quite easy to to be a sort of um uh a sort of christian who who might sort of assent to everything and be in th in theory quite you know orthodox etc go to church you know um and and yet not live out that life uh say in in the um in the workplace or uh with friends in the pub or you know so you can kind of compartmentalized and when people see a compartmentalized life like that and i think we're all guilty of it to some degree i'm not saying that you know um then people sort of probably sort of assume you don't take it that seriously mm. um and 
And if you don't take it seriously, uh, then um, uh, in, in, in how you live it out, sort of orthopraxy as well as an orthodoxy, then, um, then, then you won't convert you won't convince people that you've got anything you know beyond mm. what they have you know you won't because mm. uh, uh, yeah and i guess a sign of a sign of how seriously you take something is always what you're willing to sacrifice for it isn't it so yeah. Yeah. you know that's hence where the kind of suffering aspect comes in are you willing to suffering are you willing to suffer for this thing and that is a sign that, that you take it very seriously if you're willing to sacrifice for it yeah um so i mean what yeah i was sorry i was going to make a comment about the church of england which i will refrain i will refrain from doing that until later well, it, i'm not it's doing worth- that now it's worth noting that the unity isn't just sort of unity, you know, uh, with, with it, without a reason. You know, I hear that you're all standing firm, with one common purpose is what the Good News Translation has it as. Mm. Um, that with only one desire you are fighting, okay, together for the faith of the gospel. So mm. it's, not, it's not just like, um, you know, and, and I think Welby uh, occasionally uh, gives the impression that all he cares about is unity uh, for the sake of unity. Uh, whereas actually mm. it's unity for the sake of the gospel that's important. Yeah, or unity for some kind of ill-defined common wheel of society. Yeah. W-E-A-L, not like a wheel on a car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but we'll get we'll talk about we'll that later. We'll get yeah, that. we'll talk about mm. that later. But no, it's a, it's a really encouraging passage, I think, uh, Philippians 1, 27 to 30, mm. people want to look it up. Um, should, we talk about some, should we talk about some news before we get onto Ooh. the... Uh, the church, oh, the news. The big news. The big news today, which on the day we're recording, is that um, the old um, Nicola Sturgeon has has decided to to say bye bye. I haven't actually even read this story. She's a in, human too, you know. She's, she's a, she is she is that what she said? Yeah, yeah. Um, I am a human too. I am a ge- non gender specific human. Um, <laughs> well, this is always coming, wasn't it? So this is pretty much yeah. I'm a human being as well as a politician. Uh, but presumably, um, she's uh, she's the first female. Although, um, again, we don't know that, do we? Because not, some not of the her first female ever, Tom. F- first female long- and longest serving incumbent of this great office of first minister of Scotland. Uh, How long has this office existed? <laughs> about ten years. No, twenty years. Yeah, twenty years. Twenty years. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> so it's been so, her and Alex yeah. Salmond, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so she's the first out of two out of two people. She's the first woman. But I mean, how does she even define that? She can't define that. It means nothing mm. to her, surely. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it does or it doesn't. <laughs> all, all said and done, though, I disagree with a, a you know a huge percentage of what she would believe in. She's a canny, po- she has been a fairly canny politician. You have to say, you know, she she has uh, led that party with a, a rod of steel. Um, yeah, I'm not it's sure. Not to say in the best way, the but highest, I'm not sure. That's a high. No, 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 it's not. But uh, you know, in terms of poli- in terms of politique, I think you know she was uh, for a long time um, underestimated, just how forceful. And uh, yeah, she's, she... she's she's managed to be very popular, hasn't she? I think that's probably the best mm. thing you could say for her. I, I find this yeah. like Robert Peston has tweeted. I just find this an extraordinary tweet. He's written, that was a truly remarkable resignation statement by Nicola Sturgeon. Whether or not you back her ideas and conviction, she has been one of the most important politicians of this generation. Her call for less irrationality and hysteria in politics should be heeded. And this is the woman who could notoriously couldn't define what a woman woman is. (laughs) We've got a comment here from a friend of ours says she can hold her head high after helping Scotland win the Western World League for drug abuse, helping Scots kids top illiteracy charts, <laughs> and finally for achieving her dream of allowing convicted rapists free access to women's prisons. So, I mean, yeah. if that's... If that's I, I think what the SNP... In his, less irrationality in history and politics is, then, uh, well, she's done it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think what the SNP did, which was quite clever in a way it kind of reminded me of a sort of young conservatism uh, of the kind of 1950s and 60s that was very you know it was like one of the things to be if uh, if you were sort of um a kind of serious um mille- equivalent of a millennial uh, in those days uh was in in the demise of you know presbyterianism and catholicism she filled a, she filled that kind of religious vacuum quite cleverly you know and uh I know lots of people up there in Scotland who are incredibly enthusiastic about SNP politics in a way that reminded me of the kind of serious, a sort of religious, a religious seriousness that's mm. um, 
quite unusual, you know. Um, I mean, I don't agree with much of it, but I, I, I did find it quite bizarre that it, it sort of strangely brought together uh, different types of Scots, you know, Catholics and uh, and Protestants who wouldn't normally get together under all sorts of new strange banners, you know, from climate change to social justice sort of stuff. Um, uh, yes, it's quite a youngish party in that respect. Uh, and I think that the Tories in Scotland have quite a hard job to fill that to fill that vacuum, but um, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, I it's think an odd, you know, it's, it, it's the the dereliction of religion. I think she's filled the gap quite cleverly. But, but but she's also part of the destruction, wasn't she? She she salted oh, yeah. the soil there. I mean, ah. you know, um, the the attacks on um, on freedom of thought, on the family. You know, they they they've been there, and not just her. The, I think SNP as a whole is a sort of so called um, uh, what do they call themselves? Progressive party, mm, you know, has yeah, been yeah. A, has been a, a been behind that kind of. Um, I, yeah, it never never but, totally was, you know, up till sort of just before the millennium. It was it was larger, sort of quasi kind of um, almost high Tory kind of part, odd, you know, eccentric party. Um, because most most uh, progressive types were with Labour, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then the Labour thing collapsed uh, catastrophically. And Salmond. Uh, you know, I can remember in the sort of two, early 2000s up in Aberdeen, Salmon made a big push towards the churches and co the Catholic constituency saying they would never do X, Y and Z. And of course, um, when he left, uh, they did do X, Y and Z, mm, you know? Yeah, of course. That's what they always do. They always say, we're not going to do this. And then they just leave and then the next people do. Oh. So that's, that's that's what it's like in the Church of England as well, um, but um, I think you've got to say that this is a this is definitely a sort of um, I don't know it's a moment of political defeat for her, isn't it? Because mm. she hasn't achieved independence, which is her which was her great ambition throughout her career, and I think that this is all this is all in the context of this um, controversy over you know this <coughs> allowing this rapist into a woman's prison and supporting that, and doing a U turn on that. And then the other thing is all this Gender Recognition Act stuff, which, to be honest, I've kind of lost track of because it's so sort of labyrinthine and, and complicated. But it's it's all mired in this controversy, isn't it, I think? Yeah, and she found, you know, she, the, her perfect nemesis came forward in the in the shape of J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, incredibly bad political misfortune for, uh, well, for just... her... That the emergence of yeah, uh, it's just stupid to take on J.K. Rowling, isn't it? I mean, she's yeah. obviously going to win. She's yeah. you know, she's she's one of the, isn't she sort of one of the richest women in the world now? And yeah, yeah. you know, she's yeah. she's uncancelable. You just can't do that. You just can't cannot do that. She'd have been much better supporting J.K. Rowling and saying, oh yeah, no, she's bringing balance to the conversation. Mm. But there's this controversy yeah. over the uh, Rowling's um, compute. Well, it's not her computer game, but the Hogwarts computer game, isn't there? I'm not a gamer. So I don't no, I'm not, but I, I have Jack, heard Tom, about are you, it. Yeah. Are you into this? Have you been? Uh, no, it's not. It's not my thing. Although I do play occasionally. Play you're a bit of a, You're a bit of a gamer. I know you're I'm a bit a of a sneaky gamer, Tom. I know you like to yeah. sneak away and play a few games. But this game, I've heard it's quite good. I mean, when I was a teenager, I played games, you know, and um, yeah. I mean, computer games. Um, and I've heard it's quite a good computer game. But again, you've got all these people saying, "Oh, I don't want to be associated with J.K. Rowling. I don't want her getting the two p that will go to her from my purchasing this video game." But Apparently it's and the game video. apparently is um, in world crafting a bit too alt right. Allegedly, is it really? Allegedly, why? Right. There have been some arguments. Well, I think yeah. it's probably doing uh, quite well, though, isn't it? I think it's 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 going to get massive sales. Mm. I mean, but I mean, yeah. to be honest, um, the the sort of standard uh, and and I kind of it's a bit of a, uh, so get computer gaming culture is a funny one because it's it's sort of. Um, uh, you know, on the one hand, it's it's deeply unhealthy. Like people spend way too long. You know, I think I think all things in moderation. You know, I, you know, spend spend hours and hours and hours doing this. You probably ought to think about you know, um, trying to find other hobbies as well. Uh, getting but, some sunlight. You're getting some sunlight. Eating some uh, fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, they are quite. There's sort of conservatism to it. Mm -hmm. Sort of um, anti woke. I mean, it's sort of gets towards the sort of incel a little bit uh and I, I don't like bandying that around too much 
but there's sort of lots of even even the sort of that culture has seeped into some of the memes you get and sort of chad stuff um mm. uh, there's quite a lot of like there? shooting and um, like war and stuff like that isn't there there in, is there is some, in some yeah. games yeah not all of them not all of them no no should we advertise them. with them <laughs> No, no, and, and and it's also about like should, competition. It's about competition and things like that, isn't it? It's, it it is it is it does lend itself to more of a kind of you know if you like a right wing. Maybe it really mindset. depends on the game. I mean, like on the other hand, you get like Sims Four, which is uh, or whatever. You know, there's recent stuff about a new update that's going to bring you can have trans Sims, which makes no sense at all to me. I mean, like, there are um, they're, they're they're digital. Uh, they, don't have, they don't have a gender. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think um, uh, um, it, it's Jonathan Pajot said something about that. The YouTuber Jonathan Pajot said something about this in terms of um, it, it certainly touches very strongly on the whole hero's quest thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that 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 sort of picks up a lot of those kind of concerns. Uh, and aspirations are otherwise not available. You know, if you go to the cinema, a lot of it sometimes is so preachy, particularly some of the more recent. You know, if you're a, if you're a lad and you like like my son Marvel films, you know, some some of it now is just so it, preachy. Is anyone, still, wet. is anyone still watching them? I mean, yeah, no. not not as many people as used to. No. I saw an, I saw an, odd, uh, uh, an advert for uh, the new Ant Man film with with Paul Rudd or whatever his name is. He he's he's like. You know, sixty now. I mean, I, yeah, I have to be careful here because somebody accused us of being aged when ages when Tom Tom made a joke about um, what was it? Alan Davies Tom. having a um, having a Zimmer frame on QI, and I, I tried to explain that I'm not. Be- we weren't being ages. It was the 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 thing that's funny is is the length of time he's been on the show not his age we weren't you know laughing at his age i'm just saying no, you know like paul, saying. paul rudd yeah. has been around for ages and you know it's tom cruise as well wasn't he we got told off but you Cru- told the me cruiser the <laughs> uh, well uh, that's the opposite of ageism i'm just saying how brilliant he looks for his age yeah. that's that's yeah. the opposite of ageism i'm saying look this is this is what you can still achieve at this age yeah. you know Although he, he, he's deep faked He's deep faked quite a lot, isn't he? Is um, he? What does that he does all, I hadn't realised he does all his own stunts. I watched it. Oh, he's I was, amazing, Tom. I, was, I, amazing. I watched a um, watched a clip of him preparing for this one for the latest Mission Impossible, where he has to do a sort of ride a uh, ride a bike off a cliff, and he just he, the amount of time he put into that, like <clears throat> he learned to ride a stunt bike. Uh, he he learned to, or he probably already knew how to parachute, but he had to learn how to base start. Uh, uh, base jump, jump. Yeah. Yeah. and then and so and so you ended up with this base this this uh, this sort of um motorcycling into base jump skit which is <sighs> apparently the most uh the most expensive single stunt ever done and it was just incredible you know the preparation mm-hmm. he put so uh, you know it's fair you've enough got to respect to you've um, got to respect that even if you don't like his crazy scientology and you know jumping on the sofa and and having you know katie holmes take out a restraining order and uh you know for all that for all, all that stuff even if you don't like all that stuff You've got to respect the fact he does his own stunts, and you know he's. This is what he's been doing throughout his whole career. When he did the Color of Money in in the nineteen eighties, he learned how to be a fantastic pool player and do all these trick shots and stuff like that. So, yeah. anyway, we're yeah, kind yeah. of we're kind of a bit off the track here. Um, we should, we track. should talk yeah. about um, this uh, this this other story which uh, we've identified here, which is that I mean it's it's scary times, isn't it? Um, it's like the beginning of Independence Day. Um, Balloons the Pent- everywhere, Jeremy. <laughs> the Pentagon. <laughs> Balloons everywhere. The Pentagon uh, does not know what these unidentified objects are, nor how they stare, stay airborne. This is a this is a headline. That's literally what it says in the Telegraph. Um, the U- the U.S. Air Force general overseeing North American airspace said on Sunday after a series of shoot downs, shoot downs. That's not a word. Shoot downs of unidentified objects that he would not rule out aliens or any other explanation yet, deferring to U.S. intelligence experts and he says i'll let the intel community and the counterintelligence community figure that out i haven't ruled out anything um and then there's really? a then there's a, I mean, really? a quote from jack bergman <laughs> who says, he can rule out some things no, go on. Um, i've been in contact with wasn't me for example it wasn't you. <laughs> I've been in contact with the DOD regarding operations across the Great Lakes regions today. The US military has decommissioned another object in inverted commas over Lake Huron I appreciate the decisive action by our fighter pilots. The American a... people deserve far more <laughs> answers than we have. Hey, there's, there's, there's a very top funny Babylon gun stuff, isn't it? Yeah, they can shoot down a balloon. There was a really funny Babylon B article about uh, a, a goose <laughs> 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 looking increasingly worried as as, as a <laughs> F-16 pilot tailed it. <laughs> 
um, uh, yeah. Uh, so apparently they did they did find some sort of cameras or whatever, some sensors on the on the on the balloon that the first balloon that started it all. You know, the Chinese spy balloon. Have they actually said that um, these are balloons? Is that what they've said? Well, I don't think they said it. I, who knows? What they haven't they said are. a report. I've got here a report from the office of. The direct, director of National Intelligence issued last month cited 366 additional sightings, mostly things like balloons, drones, birds, or airborne clutter. What could that be? Like a plastic bag? One? Yeah, yeah, presumably. <laughs> like a paper bag? Yeah. Uh, but 171 repa- remained officially unexplained. So uh, I don't know. Mm. I don't know whether it's really alien. Someone has written here the comments one of my daughter's balloons blew away when we lived in the u.s it had barney the dinosaur on it could that be it so she was very upset at the time and would love to have it back if it was there was a guy a few years ago who strapped himself to um yeah a dozen or so helium balloons could it be him he died Uh, yeah and um on a chair and he ended up at ten thousand feet in the air and said it was the most ridiculous way to commit suicide Mm. Uh, well, this is a good comment here. If it was an alien craft that travelled light years to get here, you would hope it might have the technology to evade a sidewinder missile. Some yeah, alien and, somewhere is getting a right ticking off. And if it is an alien, is it was it the best thing to, to shoot it down? I mean, it's not not the greatest um, act of um, intergalactic yeah, uh, friendship, is it? You know, well, it's it's certainly not the day the Earth stood still. Mm. Have you seen that film? Mm. The original, I don't mean the Keanu Reeves remake, which I haven't seen, but it looks very different. But that's uh, that's about the the humans treat the aliens more in a more hostile way than they deserve, mm-hmm. don't they? The, the aliens are just there to teach the Earthlings about peace. And then the Earthlings will kind of shoot at them and cause cause havoc. It's kind of the opposite of Independence Day. Yeah, the Keanu Reeves one, it's, it's that the aliens come to essentially cleanse us of our lack of environmental concern. Oh, oh dear. They have to so come they, for they, us, they, then, wouldn't they? They, they <laughs> sterilise the planet. They start sterilising the planet of um, yeah. of human life. Oh, man. You know what my favourite alien invasion movie is? Is uh, Mars Attacks. Have you seen oh, that? yeah, it's brilliant, it's isn't it? Nice planet, we'll take it. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to see that. <laughs> I went to see that um, when it first came out in Disney. I was living in Orlando that summer, yeah. Yeah. and nobody in the auditorium laughed. Really, for me and a couple <laughs> other Brits, um, it's just like it just didn't scratch the humour. I don't know, but it, it was, was just maybe it's more of a kind of British sense of humour. And then when Tom it, Jones it? came on yeah, as the Tom secret Jones, weapon, yeah. 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 You know? Tom Jones, Pierce Brosnan, Jack Nicholson. Yeah. I mean, now classic Dylan... cars. Um, Michael J. Fox is in it. I'm just trying to think. The lady. He wasn't friend. singing Delilah, was he? I mean, he was singing. Um, uh, it ain't. It's not unusual. That's unusual. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. That, yeah, that yeah. blows the aliens' brains up. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he so he funny. sort of is the, ends up as the hero, doesn't he? With that with that uh, boxer. Yeah, uh, I, I love the scene at the beginning. It's really interesting, actually, the scene at the beginning, because this has actually happened a number of times in real life, including recently, where not the aliens, obviously, but the symbolism, <laughs> because the, the humans meet the aliens and then somebody releases and everything looks fine. They've kind of made contact and somebody releases a dove from the crowd and then everyone looks at the oh, sorry, the alien, somebody. Yeah, this is what happens. Sorry, yeah. the alien says something. Ah, 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 ah. And then they translate it and it says, we come in peace. And all the crowd says, oh, we come in peace. We come in peace. And then this guy goes, they came in peace. And he releases this dove into the air. And then as soon as he releases the dove, the alien gets out his laser gun and shoots the dove. And the dove um, is incinerated. And then there's this sort of chaos as the aliens start you know massacring everyone and it's 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 absolutely hilarious scene but but the the interesting thing is that this has actually happened i've heard of this happening at least two times in real life and one of them was recently was when it was the pope who released oh it. yes yes a dove yeah. of peace for ukraine which was then yeah. immediately killed by a gull wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's again, Jonathan Pajot said symbolism yeah. happens, folks. Well, well, this is exactly what I was going to say. I heard Jonathan Pajot talking about this in another context where exactly the same thing happened. I can't actually remember what it was about, but it was about a similar kind of sort of contentious mm. political issue. But he said, you know, it's interesting when you think about it, like symbolism is not just something we read into the world. It's actually present in the world. And it's, it's you know, yeah. it's it's meaningful. Yeah, I, I have to say the funniest part of that film 
was when the chandelier falls on Glenn Close <laughs> as as Mrs. as the president's wife, and she goes, "Oh no, not the Nancy Reagan chandelier!" <laughs> doesn't um doesn't Glenn Close? Doesn't she play the president in the, in that film? Don't look up. Is that am I am I getting that wrong? Mm. I think she might. That's an interesting link, isn't it? That's good. Yeah, that that well. was a very funny film too. Yeah, right? yeah. Although, yeah. although obviously, um, obviously it was climate propaganda, but you know we can forgive it that uh, mm. it was it was funny. Um, we should move on to the next story, uh, which comes to us from scientists. Thank you very much, scientists. It's great that the scientists are always telling us what to do, isn't it? Because trust the science, guys. Otherwise, we we should have a weekly trust <coughs> the science section mm. where, we, where we get where we get together with some scientists and they tell us exactly what to say and to think and what to believe. Uh, use egg yeah, producing. Yeah. Not female, uh, says scientists, say scientists, in call to phase all binary language. Um, this is the words male and female should be phased out in science because they reinforced ideas that sex is binary, scientists have suggested. Researchers studying ecology and evolutionary biology should be encouraged to use terms such as sperm producing or egg producing or... Which is... Come on. But all of these are in fact binaries, aren't they? Sperm producing, egg producing, binary, X Y X X, a binary. Uh, it's it's it's, ma- it's to mad. avoid, but Tom, it's to avoid emphasising yeah. heteronormative views. Oh, of course, other yeah, words down with heteronormativity. Remember, yeah, what well, it's it's terrible. It's never told us. Let, let me read this bit. Uh, other words and terms deemed problematic include man, mm-hmm. woman, right, uh, father, mother, uh, primitive, advanced, alien, invasive. Exotic, non-native, and race. They'd have mm. a real trouble describing the film Mars Attacks, then, wouldn't they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Would well, you remember Bra- any, Brave any, New any World? Any alien invasion film. <laughs> in, in uh, so, uh, yeah, so like some people, no, not people, yeah, some, some non-binary <laughs> individuals from not on this planet uh, have come to the planet uh, in order to i don't know what they do they can't they can't use invasive because of invade can we to I mean, to, to, uh, to colonize i mean colonize colonize, colonize hasn't yeah, been banned, but maybe that's beyond, maybe add that's to diversity beyond. add to the diversity yeah, there we are yeah, yeah. and yeah. reduce overpopulation yes yeah, yeah, yeah there we for are for the environment in, the, in environment. the interest of the environment yes yeah. uh, I, I mean yes. it'd be great for um you know, if, if you're you're about to a speech in the old days you know you'd say ladies and gentlemen now you can say Egg was it? Uh, uh, egg, egg producers, sperm producers uh, and egg producers. <laughs> it's, it's lovely it's, to have you here actually, this evening. It's actually quite <laughs> offensive to women who've been through the menopause, isn't it? What are they? I mean, it's just you know, nothing. It's just nothing anymore. Yeah, yeah. that's ages. That is that's ageism. Um, yeah. now, not that I want to get into loads of detail, but if men yeah. have, um, if men have a snip, do they still produce sperm? Can they still be called sperm producers? I think they do still produce it. They just oh, can't okay. distribute it. Well, you could definitely, you could still definitely problem. say, you could definitely say <laughs> X, Y, and X, X individuals. Yeah, you could, but you might as well call male and female because it's actually easier. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just way too heteronormative. To, yeah, to, you're, you're uh, a yeah. oppressor. You are, you are notoriously heteronormative, Tom. It yeah, is, it is, um, it's, it's quite oppressive. Mm. Here we are. This goes on, actually. Just keep we should have on. started, actually, with a trigger warning for the <laughs> yeah, whole yeah, yeah, podcast. Really. Uh, we should just put one up in general, shouldn't we? Here we go. Here we go. It keeps on going. For example, they yeah. flagged up the term citizen science, saying it could be harmful to non-citizens who may feel excluded. <laughs> Instead, they suggest participant science or community science. But what if you're not in the community, then you're what, if you're, yeah, what if you're not, if you're not participating? participating. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, the term invasive t- or non-native species is also deemed to be xenophobic, anti-immigrant and militaristic. Really? It could be, it could be, this is it. This is what you want, Tom. And could newly, be newly with, arrived. Newly arrived or nuisance species. Nuisance species. That's way worse. I mean, uh, that's way more sort of anti immigrant, isn't it? You can just imagine Farage coming out with that. Oh, a nuisance species. Winked at by the technocrats in Brussels. Uh, even the plays, phrase double blind, which is often used to describe oh. trials in which neither the participants nor scientists know if they're on a drug or a procedure, have been deemed potentially offensive to those with disabilities presumably only one disability which would be blindness have they actually asked it i doubt i very much doubt there's a single blind person who's been offended by the phrase double blind uh, uh yeah i mean it's it does seem it does you do ra- ra- raise a good question there tom because do blind people actually mind being called blind i don't know many blind people but the blind people i do know refer to themselves as blind so 
you know it's i don't know are you not are you not sort of colonizing their language by you suggesting are, it's, that it's, it's offensive you probably are yeah you probably are um i think the only answer is not to speak yeah in case yeah. in case uh, which, which, which makes maybe, doing science slightly problematic doesn't well, it well yeah you know yeah. if you've got to say um you know oh pass me the um you know pass me the screwdriver i need to just shorten which wire was it the black one or the one <laughs> the yeah. white one or no you can't call it the black one i mean the non-white one and the white one you know uh, uh let, let's hope these people are not in charge of um a, anything um uh, well sensible here's one explosive. of explosive one of them is dr caitlin gaynor an author on a paper who studies the impact on of human activity on biodiversity at the university presumably uh not just limited to the university though said the project started as a Twitter conversation among a few people discussing potentially harmful terminology. Now, that does not sound like a good start of any project, you know, that, that, to be honest. Um, we reached out for different networks. Well, that's how I got to know you folks two years ago. Uh, potentially harmful terminology. We were discussing potentially harmful terminology, does it? Uh, we reached out to different networks in ecology and evolution that were focused on increasing... So they're basically not scientists, are they? Ecology, evolution, biodiversity, these do not sound like scientists to me. Um, <laughs> so yeah. it's a bit misleading, isn't it? Firstly, mm-hmm. I suggest it's offensive to those who are actually scientists. Um, so, sorry, Tom, what, who are not scientists? Any of those. Just Well, just should we go through them again just so we can... Like ecologists, sure we, ecologists. Who we've offended. I mean, okay. what, what, it's not a hard science, is it? Uh, evolution is is uh, not really a hard science either. It's it's sort of. I noticed um, you were using the word "hard" now to soften your your position. Soften it's not a science, is it? If it's not, if it's, it's not a science, not. So science. the social sciences aren't science. The, let's the, be honest, the young earth it? creationists who I've had uh, a deluge of uh, correspondence <laughs> from this week, Tom, will be very pleased to hear you saying these things. <laughs> Right. Uh, just believe me, and I don't look. I don't want another deluge. I've taken on. I've taken on board the the feedback. But every time we mention anything to do with evolution, we get like all these comments and emails of like. So now have I offended the other side of it? That's all right. As long as I'm doing it equally. Um, uh, yeah. No. 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 They'll be happy. They'll be, they'll happy, be happy. But the scientists, the, the, the ecologists who are listening, the evolutionists, and the authors on human activity on biodiversity at the university uh, who are listening uh, will all be offended by me now because I you're not started, scientists not get scientists. out of, get out yeah. of the sciences don't, and, don't, and miss... don't go don't go into the humanities either because you're not humanities either so just go and start your own university where you're non-binary university because you're not sci- it's not science all right that's what tom says it's and i agree i'm throwing my lot in with tom there we are. be offended yeah <laughs> right <Be offended>. Jamie. <laughs> yes i don't care <laughs> vicar, vicar in in uh, science denial controversy <laughs> after collecting the various branches of science and not really science um, i feel yeah. like another merchandise t-shirt might be coming on on the back of this what do you think what would be written on it mm. uh, it's not hard science it's, it's not, not hard science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> it's irreverent <laughs> yeah, yeah that's uh, good like you that. can you can have like two lists couldn't you? you could have like science and you just put under there you know, um, a uh, physics, a, 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 a method, a method of, of asking questions about the world, not science, and just write all of these sort of social sciences on the other side. Okay. See how you go. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe just that's walk around the right. campus and see if you're lynched. <laughs> yeah, I think firstly you'd have to have a more specific and comprehensive definition of what science is, and secondly, I think it would need to be a bit more catchy. You know, yeah, you probably. can't just have you can't have whatever it was you just said. I tried to no. write it down and I just couldn't even remember it, even after you, <laughs> even after you just said it. So, all right, okay, you. well, you know, you know, it's, um, I'll work you know, it. I'll work science. It. It's only science if the um, conclusions are falsifiable. I mean, that's yeah. not very catchy either, is it? It's true, though. It's true. Well, um, it's a theory, Tom. It's a theory about what constitutes science that comes from uh, Karl Popper. If I remember my philosophy of science seminars accurately which i may not because it was a long time ago but um there is debate about what science actually is you know what what sure. constitutes a science like for example if you have to have a um you know uh, experiments which are repeatable then it, evolutionary um biology, and biology ecology is, not, is not a science no. because you can't you can't do any experiments you can only dig up stuff and, and look at them um yeah. it, well oh okay yeah let's not get into this tom because i'm sure people say no you can you can do experiments so anyway i don't know well, like, I'm, yeah. I'm not a scientist all right i'm not claiming to be one tom's the one who's saying he knows everything right just before i get all the emails right i don't know anything i just did a philosophy of science module once 
I think uh, we're 50 minutes in and we barely <laughs> touched the Church of England. <laughs> well, good. We, we said we wouldn't, we said we wouldn't talk about it for ages because uh, uh, you know um, we don't want it to dominate everything. But we have we have got to it, so I think we should talk about right. it. Um, so little. So what we said we do is we do a summary, then we're going to watch a, a video and comment on it. We'll, we'll we'll just hear the audio and comment on it, um, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about some things that uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury has been saying. But I mean, chaps, let's let's try and keep this. It's concise okay but does someone want to try and summarize what's happened this week in the church of england i was ill so i missed it all what yeah I, i've given up watching jamie you go ahead yeah <laughs> okay, well okay well i mean look i don't know I, you guys probably know more about the ins and outs of this because i'm not you know i find this kind of whole general synod, general synod kind of mechanics fairly soul destroying but essentially what has happened is that there's been a vote in the church of england's governing body uh the general synod which is going which is approving in principle, the plan for um, yeah. the use, the potential use of prayers of blessing uh, for same-sex couples in our churches. So That's people right. won't so be able to get married, but they'll be able to be blessed by these the, the, you know, gay people won't be, uh, be able to be married to each other but they'll be able to be blessed in their civil partnerships in churches or will they i mean it's, it's very it's very woolly isn't it because um yes it's been passed by a relatively slim mi- mi- a majority it must be said i think if five people or six people have changed their minds in the laity as a laity then uh we would have not passed it so that's actually not a huge scope for upsetting people from the bishops um the uh the 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 synod vote um is for the for the for the proposal plus one extra um uh one extra thing that was sort of agreed on amendment uh, amendment yeah, yeah amendment g which simply restates what the, in sort of legally what the bishops had already said in their living in uh, re- response to living in love and faith that there would be no change to the church's doctrine mm-hmm. uh on uh, which is uh, b kind of B30 um, uh, among other places. So um, that which was held as a sort of minor victory for um, for the conservative, um, those who are opposing it, because uh, although, although um, what, what power that actually has in practice is another question. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, arch, the bishops had already claimed that there was no change in theology, so they were happy enough to support that because they were pretty certain that there is no change. But... Um, well, and yeah, so that passed. remains that remains a, a significant content, a significantly contentious aspect. It's, it it certainly does, but quite how it will be tested is another question. I mean, yeah, court court case yeah. against someone doing them possibly. Uh, it's it's quite tricky to. to there's no sort of um, there's no re, there's no easy way to um, to sort of prevent the bishops publishing it. It has to be used uh, before I think it can be. Um, sort of any any sort of court case as far as i'm aware and and actually that's not been a very positive way of dealing with church discipline in the past it hasn't worked uh i'm thinking here of, of the uh of the of the uh um trial of king uh, edward king jamie um yeah who's a hero of yours of course uh so um it's, it's hard to know quite I don't think there's any chance of this that actually happening, though, is there, Tom? I don't think anyone doubts no. that this is going to go through, and this is going to this is going. Well, to I mean, we don't quite know what's going to go through because the bishops now have to produce those are draft. They have to produce a final form, uh, and they have to justify it, and uh, they have to uh, bring it before synod in July. So it's not yet over. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, but even so, I think the 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 expectation is that this is going to this is going to pass, or at least that's the impression that the bishops want us to have yep, they do. Um, part part of the problem with this as i see it um apart from its heterodox nature is that the bishops are essentially and this is you know one of the aspects about about it which i, I feel really upset about is that essentially what what this means for clergy is it personalizes this whole issue so now if a well, you know, previously, if a gay couple had come and said, you know, we want to have a blessing in in of our civil partnership, the answer would have just been straightforwardly, no, we don't bless um, civil partnerships in the Church of England. It's not our doctrine or practice and straightforward. It's not a personal thing. It's just the reality of the church's doctrine and practice. Now, it's up to everyone to do what is right in their own eyes. And it just seems to me to be... Uh, it just seems to me to, to be the wrong way to to rule and govern the church, to put your 
clergy in that position. And, you know, I don't want to claim victimhood and and say, oh, you know, poor me and so on and so forth. But it does put conservatives in a difficult position or, or I would just call them orthodox Christian ministers in a, in a, in a difficult position because uh, the pressure will be on us to liberalise and to um, go along with this. And we will we are apt to be called all the names under the sun, you know, bigots and and people who are being discriminatory, people who are not being, uh, you know, are promoting equality. And, you know, we're going to watch this this film in a minute where this narrative is being peddled. And you've just got to ask yourself, like, what does this actually, what is the implication of this for Orthodox Christian ministers? It's that we represent everything that is the opposite of what's being implied, at least, by the bishops. Like, we're not, you know, we're not radically inclusive. We're not part of this great leap forward that's being spoken of you know we're not part of the progress that's being made and it's, it's quite it's we, quite offensive actually the bishop the archbishop's statement implies that you know we weren't and don't offer a radical christian welcome mm. which is which is not true um, because a uh, radical christian welcome was never but took before understood to to include blessing of, of things that god has called sinful yeah and uh, also you know they haven't been to our churches and, and had the cake and you know the the they haven't sampled the soft furnishings, you know. No. How do they know? How do they know our radical? And, and, and there's been radical. comparisons. Have you noticed there's been comparisons being made with the uh, the canons on divorce? Um, and uh, it's just the same thing as this: that if a if a traditional minded clergy person didn't want to do um, this, then it's just like with the divorce legislation that's within the church. And I think actually you've got something that's far far more contentious and very public you know and that can you imagine where um couples who don't get the answer they want to then go to the local press yeah you know, and and start kind of stirring it up and then you start dividing parish councils and benefices start having arguments about this that, that there's yeah normally in an organization as you said at the beginning of this chat that that the norm is things are kicked up. The can is kicked up the hierarchy. This is kicking the can down the hierarchy mm. and saying, well, the guys on the ground, you can deal with the collateral damage with this. Thank you very decision. much, bishops. Yeah, and I you think, made I think, the decision. Yeah, that's I think it's saying. fair enough to say that, that, A, you know, there are actually quite strict um, conditions attached to remarrying a divorcee that we have to be careful to follow. Uh, uh you know, it's not it's not as simple as that. You can just do what you want. And B, there is actually theological sort of wriggle room in what Jesus said, uh, Matthew nineteen. Mm. Uh, it's it's uh, the, the the wriggle room being um, uh, Jesus says, everyone who tells I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immor immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. That's the teaching of Jesus, which you know, in plain terms, uh, would would imply that if if a divorce has happened because of a partner being sexually unfaithful. Uh, then, then it's not adultery to remarry, um, and I think you know that's that's that, that's the that's the theological reasoning. On the other hand, the the theology theology behind say blessing of same sex sexual relationships is what we're talking about here. The, the you know the idea that these are ever going to be used to bless chaste relationships is is nonsense. They, they you know that's not what anyone's asking for, um, it, and the Bible is quite united about about how it deals with. Um, Mm. about how it deals with the in that in that sense you know yeah um, so can i ask a question about this chaps because i'm genuinely <coughs> interested to know if you've seen anything on this so uh i saw the archbishop of canterbury quoted as saying uh i'm not doing this because i'm controlled by culture i'm doing this because of a careful paying attention uh, careful attention to scripture reason and tradition or something like that and i saw uh, stephen cottrell who um gave an answer to a friend of the show benjamin john uh, about his mm. question uh, it was a very patronizing answer and uh, ben actually put on twitter that uh, later he apologized in person so credit mm. him for apologizing but it was a very very patronizing answer uh, in which he uh, extraordinarily actually quoted or at least referenced john henry newman's development of doctrine idea in uh, support of this uh, movement uh, elsewhere, somebody has asked uh, just, Sarah Mullally. To... Hang, hang on a sec. Just let me finish this, Tom, because I, 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 I think this is an important point. Elsewhere, somebody has asked Sarah Mullally to um, to demonstrate 
the the theological reasoning that has led to this position rather than just saying well scripture reason and tradition have led us to this position but to demonstrate the reasoning and as i understand it she simply said that she wasn't going to so i guess my question is has anyone actually seen any theological argument anywhere in support of this move well n- not really i mean it's very hard to i mean seriously uh, has there been one has anyone even a quoted a scripture or referenced anything in tradition well, they, they tend from... they tend to they tend to say things like you know if you read flick through in paul's twitter the the main arguments uh, for it tend to be that jesus said nothing about homosexuality which is not true uh, he said uh, he, he talks about pornaria, which was understood as a category which included that uh, act of yeah, homosexuality. It's, it's, yeah, it's pornaria. You know, uh, pornaria, sorry, and uh, but also uh, you know it, it, it's beside the point anyway because the the, the the apostle Paul and the inspired scriptures of Moses both uh, both make it very clear as well. So it's not you know I don't know quite why people think that we can just take four gospels and say that's yeah, you know, yeah that's but, it. but yeah um, I'm with you Tom. Uh, but what what I'm saying okay. is, is there yeah, actually yeah. a positive? Has anyone has any of the bishops? But that's it. That's basically that's, put no, not the bishops, a positive no. theological argument for this movement because I have I've literally seen nothing. There's, there's, what I've seen is. What I've seen is the conclusion. I haven't seen any sort of mm. reasoning. Or t- anything the, I mean, I guess there's. I guess you could sort of say you know, the arguments by Inge and the bishop and uh, the bishop of Oxford. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. are, are in, which are for um, marriage rather than blessing. Of, so it could be applied sort of directly. That effect, but it's not. It's not scriptural, is it? It's not. They're not working from scripture and coming to this conclusion because that is, uh, you know, it's it's not. It's against the plain, plain sort of. Uh, yeah. Was in Stephen in Stephen Croft's um, pamphlet. He he uh, when he gets to Romans one, he just abandons any attempt even to mm. try and make it say what he wants to say. He just says, "Oh, Paul is just reflecting a a Jewish um, antipathy towards homosexuality here," and that's basically all he says as as uh, by way of dismissing it. Yeah. So he doesn't even. Not that he believes it has that that text has um, no hold on the Christian. Yeah. Even though it's in the New Testament, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's always I mean, I, I, he doesn't give any I, reason for this. He just says, "Oh yeah, it's just you know we've moved beyond this. This is science or whatever." And I think in the subsequent either. video, the Bishop of Lancaster, Jill Duff, hit the nail on the head when you said what what we actually needed was a theology of sex, right? Because love can mean anything, but sex is very particular. Mm. Um, and without that we've come to where we are at the moment you know because yep. no one wants to to do that that hard work theology and um there we go we yep. we we end but, up actually having different arguments with each other that are parallel and never getting anywhere and and credit credit to Jill Duff for speaking out mm-hmm. i haven't heard any other bishop say anything critical of this in public except for her so credit to her I think uh, I think it's, it's it's a real moment of uh, of leadership, um, of you know from an evangelical position. But it'd be nice to hear some other traditionalists sort of join the chorus of voices, wouldn't it? Um, no, no, where it's are not they? A chorus. It's not a chorus. <laughs> well, well it's a solo. There's a solo, solo isn't it? Really? There's, I mean, you know, there's there's plenty of there's plenty of, of, of voices from the from the evangelical benches in synod, but. Um, uh, which is what I was really referring to, right, um, okay, yeah. but no yeah. other bishops prepared to lend lend, the, lend their voices to that, which would be mm. a quite powerful thing for them to do, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's it's still incoherent. I mean, for example, um, if you don't change the doctrine of the church, uh, then you can't bless active same sex re- active, you know, relation sexual relationships outside of marriage, you know, because that would be a change of the doctrine of the church so they're gonna to have to square that one they need to show at least a little bit of reasoning as to either why the ch- doctrine of the church doesn't say that or you know uh mm-hmm. um and uh also uh, this whole thing about the um another part of it of course is the uh um the new the replacement of issues in human sexuality and it's very hard to see how they will replace it with a document that tells people not to follow the doctrine of the church if they haven't changed the doctrine of the church you see so yeah. so, so you know so, Tom, just what's the their people... rigor here yeah, no, just so who, people know what that means. Yeah, so issues in human sexuality, I think, was is a document that was issued in 1991, wasn't it? Which is the it's kind not of, a great document. It must be said, it's not a great document. Yeah, but, which was up until now the the sort of statement on human sexuality that yeah. you know, for example, as an ordinance, you had to read it and sort of agree to it at least, uh, not contradict it too loudly. Um, but it, mm. and it was it was reasonably orthodox, wasn't it? There were issues with it. But um, listen, should we watch this video? I mean, yeah, this was, on. of all the things I've seen this week, I think this is the thing I that upset me the most. Um, this is a video 
Now, anyone who's been involved in producing anything like this knows that the videos like this take time to be produced. And I think it would be an extraordinary claim by anyone to say that this was not produced weeks in advance, or at least days in advance. But it, it, this video has clearly been in production for a while. It was released, I think it was the day after the, mm. the vote in Synod. It may have been even the same day. Um, so it was clearly planned. Um, and well, I think since that, Synod finished at seven o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. So this was clearly, so this was clearly planned in the daytime. This was clearly planned in advance. It's got all the the main players in it. Justin Welby, Archbishop of York. And I think, Tom, what you were saying earlier, definitely has purchased as far as this video is concerned, is that this video claims things which are, well, I mean, let's let's listen to it and see. But I think that there are a number of sort of factually questionable claims in it. But anyway, over the last see. six years, the Church of England has been traveling together through our living in love and faith process as we consider questions around identity, sexuality, relationships and marriage. So this is Justin Welby speaking. And just to explain, this has a number of sort of intercut images of different types of relationships. So, for example, there's just been an image of, a, of an uh, older lesbian couple who live in the same house coming out of the door. Um, so. And uh, chaps, just say, you know, if you want me to stop at any point, just say. Just can, can, you, can you share it with us? Um... <laughs> I can't because it will. The video will mess up the, the recording. Oh, okay. time, so. Um, sorry about that. We'll have to find. We'll have to sort our our technology at some stage so we, so that we can do that. But I don't. I don't want to mess up the image no, no, no. for the people who are, who are watching. So let's carry on. People like me from all across the country have shared their stories. What it means to be LGBTI plus and a follower of Christ. Using the living and love and faith resources, communities from across the church were invited to learn together. To These are to participants in living and love and faith now. Scriptures paid attention to the church's tradition and listened to the wider church through your responses. So that was Stephen Cottrell. He right. said, we've we've studied the scripture, scriptures, we've paid attention to the tradition and we've listened to the wider church. But that, I, mean, that, I mean, for one thing, they ignored the wider church in Synod, didn't they, quite, quite pointedly? But um, the, mm. the, the issue I is... I think that... the wider church is now... It's flexing his arms a little bit. Well, yeah. Think, yeah, or it's um, probably a question of what he actually means by the wider church, right, so, so. because he um, probably means the sort of progressive element within the Church of England rather than the Roman Catholic Church or the Eastern Orthodox Church, um, for example. Or the rest of the Anglican, the rest yeah. of the Anglican uh, Communion. But by, the, by the way, um, figures were shown that the LFF process was budgeted at over a million pounds. Right. Yeah. So, so this uh, it's not quite true either. They, they weren't strictly speaking studies, whether they they were they were they were they were not studying scripture together in in quite the way that you might imagine. They didn't sort of sit down. They, they sort of the LNF um, in the end produced a document which basically sets out two mutually contrasting ways of reading scripture, and they don't really speak to each other, do they? They they just say here is an orthodox way of reading scripture, and here is a revisionist way of reading scripture, mm. and you know in the end there's not there's not really much interplay between them in, in the, it's, it's just it's just a listening process wasn't it it wasn't yeah. a uh it wasn't designed to produce an outcome but come on i mean uh, I, I i just i just just i just don't believe that that's what they've done i don't believe they've studied the scripture i don't believe they paid attention to the tradition and i don't believe they're listening to the voice of the wider church i think they're ignoring all three things so i think this is yeah i think this is untrue yep uh, the other thing of course is this, this chap who claims to be you know claims to be an lgbtqi plus and, and we've said this before, but that that isn't a category yeah. that can that can that can sensibly be be invoked. And it really irritates me when the bishops ap apologise to them. You know, as we said a couple of weeks ago, you know what what, what yeah. Well, there's it's what are we apolog what are we apologising for? That's the thing. It's like where there's no clarity of what the apology is actually for, is it? Yeah. If it's for if it's for being genuinely unwelcoming and nasty to people, then of course. But and have we been unwelcoming and nasty to interesting yeah, yeah, but, people? Yeah, just, I mean, point, Tom, this, just sorry, Joe, the point yeah, is, if, if somebody has actually done that, then of course an apology is... Well, it should be a personal perfect. apology. Though, if, it's, it? if, it's, if it's that you just have an orthodox Christian view, then that apology <laughs> is not appropriate. So yeah. what, what is actually being apologised for? Anyway, look... This, this, but but also, is... indi individual acts, sorry, individual acts of, of being nasty to people are certainly wrong, but I don't see why they add up to an institutional apology. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Go. This video is three minutes long, by the way. Go, We've done go. 30 seconds. So. <laughs> Here we go. Through your responses. We've been moved by your poetry, prayers and artwork. 
Above so, all, we have sought the wisdom of the Spirit in prayer and worship. Engaging with living in love and faith hasn't always been an easy process, but it has enabled us to become more open and honest with each other. One of the key questions on this journey concerns same-sex relationships and marriage. We're united in our desire to nurture a church where everyone is welcomed, accepted and affirmed in a 21st century church. We are deeply sorry and ashamed for when we have failed to do so, causing pain, exclusion and rejection of LGBTI plus people. With joy. Yeah, and there you go. There's, there's, your, there's your sort of institutional apology and the ambiguity around it. It's like what's actually being apologised for? You know, there's all the, it, what I'm seeing now is all these pieces of paper with like words like fear and prejudice and shame and discrimination written on them. And the implication, you know, is unclear, isn't it? <coughs> are, you, are you apologizing? No, and and the, if you wind back to that, the, the welcoming inclusion and affirmation, yeah. you know, again, the, there's so little theological work done on that. What does that mean? Where is conversion, repentance, transformation in any of that, you know. Where, where, is, re, where is repent for the kingdom is at hand, you know, in, in that. Yeah, the opening to Christ's ministry, yeah. ministry in Matthew's gospel. Where is any of that? How does any of that work, you know? Um, yeah, and, and what is that saying about people who aren't going along with this, you know, which is hmm. the point I was making earlier. It's implying that because you have hmm. an orthodox view on this, that you're somehow – holding on to this sort of outdated prejudicial way of uh, relating to these people and this is likewise if you have and synod had a number of people who spoke up you know with these great saintly lives of uh of gay people living to the traditional understanding of chastity uh, and it strikes me that so far all these statements just sort of poo poo that they flatten that down don't yeah. they there they're is no they're there is no them. greater call of holiness i mean in, in some sense when you somebody does some has a sacrificial life to that degree it strikes me that and um, that that's so incredible i want to be you know i I deem myself a second class christian in their place do you know what i mean because yeah. that they are climbing the cosmic mountain uh in a hypersexualized society where is their affirmation and encouragement? Yeah, yeah. Where's their Where's their inclusion? How How where's are they their inclusion? By, you know, by this this is. Um, you, could, you could argue that this is profoundly alienating for people like that. Mm. The point. The point again. I don't want to go on about this, you know, because I don't want to sort of paint myself as a victim. But I I find the fact that you've got all these bishops, including the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York, involved in making a a video like this, threatening personally you know because because these are these are the most powerful people in the church who are clearly throwing their weight behind a progressive agenda which implies things about orthodox christians and orthodox ministers which are derogatory I mean, extremely derogatory and this is this is um yeah i, I won't say anything else but uh, but I, I do find that i do find that very very mm. i do find it to be threatening um, yeah. Not that I feel personally threatened by it, but I think it's a use of power. Um, it's an aggressive use of power against people with with whom they clearly disagree. And the 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 idea that this is a sort of, um, you know, this is some kind of generic um, agreement that we've come to, which sort of we're all happy with, is just a fantasy. It, it, let's let's yeah. let's carry on. Let's carry on listening to this. We cherish and value LGBTI plus people and we welcome unreservedly and joyfully same-sex couples in our churches. We want to celebrate the faithfulness of same-sex couples to each other and the desire to put God at the center of their relationship. That's why we shall create new prayers and a service which can be used in our churches, which affirm and celebrate same-sex couples who have entered into civil partnership or marriage, as well as other significant relationships. These resources will represent a significant move. So what was that about? Had, had the Synod voted against, would there have been another video coming out? Yeah, I'm wondering that, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Maybe it'd be, you know, evangelicals walking slowly down the street, you know, telling people the glory of God. Um, <laughs> yes. The, uh, After much study of the scriptures, we have decided to stay to hopeful music the rises in the teaching yeah. of the Church of England on yeah. sexuality and marriage. Um, uh, I, we're not you know, this, we're not moving forward in any way there's another thing about this is called living in love and faith and moving forward the whole metaphor is about progression moving away from the past etc um, so so the so so there we have you know and the interesting thing who is telling you i mean what i mean presumably be in the guidelines or something you know so there other, aren't significant, guidelines. other significant relationships so you can use this with civilly married so civilly married people um so people in civil partnerships and anyone who just you fancy really you know should i you know yeah. should i bless friendships friendships you know one night stands why not they've all got something you know they've got something blessable about them surely i mean it's very because it's the net's been cast so widely uh you know yes there's, you know the 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 who, who can't be and whose decision is that i mean it seems like very odd yeah. Did you notice in the towards the end of the debate a little pride flag came up on the oh, on yeah. the monitor um so and this then was, it, this it was, quickly disappeared this was in the general synod feed and it's it's this is absolute fact i've had i've seen this confirmed in several several ways yeah, yeah. on the general synod feed a pride flag flashed up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen as the vote was called yeah. as the vote was called for several seconds um yeah it's, it's absolutely shocking uh should we carry just carry on with this i mean let's this go, is largely go. the same stuff over and over again but let's let's continue listening that are intended as a loving and pastoral response to the same-sex couples amongst us. These prayers and services will not change the church's understanding of Christian marriage, which is the lifelong relationship between one man and one woman. We realise within that which, for which, which to say, within which is the only appropriate place for sexual intercourse it is the church's <coughs> doctrine. I mean, so so either they have to say we can't use this with non-celibate couples. And I'm not, you know, or we have to say that it's changing the doctrine. But anyway, okay. Yeah. yeah if it looks like a marriage, sounds like a marriage, then it surely is a marriage. If you it, it, needs, it needs to be up there straight up in front. Of, you know, I don't know quite, again, who's going to decide this, but, you know, the vicar yeah. has yeah. to, has to, has to use his discretion to not use this with people who he thinks is, uh, you know, are, are in sexual relationships or surely change the doctrine of the church mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 right tom you you are correct there and did I you see that someone today on twitter's proposed a rainbow cross thing for the new church of england a genuine it's a genuine progressive liberal person has has suggested this rainbow cross thing um i mean it's very well done kind of arty wise um it's not really the point <laughs> not really the point but it's it's as the new logo for the church of england yeah well it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me daniel it wouldn't surprise me I mean, um, just like yeah, how right. how to alienate half the church of england yeah i think i think what you say there tom is right because you know um i know this is a this is a short video, but it's a pretty minimal definition of what marriage is that's given, yeah. you know, a lifelong commitment between a man and a woman. It's not just a lifelong commitment. It's it's the appropriate. Uh, it's the only appropriate environment for se a sexual relationship. And it's it's also intrinsically linked to uh, having children as well. And that's that goes for both the Book of Common Prayer and and common worship. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't you can't you, you, can't, you can't ignore the, those you can't simply ignore it. You know, it's, it's yeah. not. So, so if they if they are to say these don't change the doctrine of the Church of England, they need to be explicit about who you can use them with, which basically ends up with covenanted friendships and and celibate um, same sex relationships, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, and that's any not, further, but, yeah, but that's not but, what anyone thinks this is about. No, no. And so that's that's wants. where that's where I mean, let's just be really clear about this. That's where the the that's where this is apt to be interpreted as dishonest. OK, so I'm not yeah. I'm not I'm not saying anyone is being dishonest, but I'm saying when you actually break it down, like what is actually being said, what is being implied by the use of these prayers, it's apt to be interpreted as being dishonest because we're saying that we're not changing the doctrine of the church. The, do <coughs> the implication of the, do the church's doctrine on marriage is that sexual union is only appropriate, is only licit within the context of a marriage. So if you bless a, a relationship. And as part of that blessing, the implication is that the couple is the couple's sexual union is being blessed. Then that that implies a change in the doctrine of the church in um, the Church of England's. Sorry, that implies a change of doctrine regarding marriage for the Church of England. So you can't you can't have it both ways here. It either you're either as you say, Tom, you're either blessing celibate relationships 
or and not changing the doctrine or you're blessing non-celibate relationships and you are changing the doctrine you can't that's just a logical point that you know you can't have you can't have both of those you can't have the blessing of non-celibate gay relationships and not having a change in the doctrine of marriage it just, it just does not work it doesn't matter if, if you say it, you can you can offer clarifications and say you're not but you are so anyway let's carry on for a bit these prayers and services will not go far enough but for others they will seem to go too far just, we realize that again. for some these prayers and services will not go far enough but for others they will seem to go too far whether we choose to use them that phrase by the way um some will be upset that these go don't go far enough some will be upset they don't they go too far that has been repeated in all the official communications that i've heard from bishops and so mm. on yeah. um now sometimes these things just sort of catch on as like a, a meme sometimes they are agreed upon beforehand but um that that is clearly a line which has been selected as sort of you know Try, I don't know why. I don't know what the point of it is. It's just something I've noticed. You know, like they sort of acknowledging everyone. Some will feel this, and some will. Well, some will think that. And so, you know, so they could have put in brackets seventy five percent of the Anglican Communion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Or not, we continue to walk together, respecting our differences, and are collectively embracing a radical Christian inclusion as the agreed way forward. We I just have to stop it there because I don't, don't believe that I can walk together with people who are contradicting uh, the scripture in this high-handed way. And I don't believe that a basis for unity is radical Christian inclusion. You know, no, I believe I, I, I deny, unity I, is, is Christ and faithfulness to Christ. I, I deny both of these things. Yeah. Well, I think that that's what our first, our scripture reading was, isn't it? What we began with from Philippians I, I wonder if the you know the the hierarchy actually truly understand that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I don't you know I I don't particularly you know I I I, I haven't quite sorted out my response yet, and but I will mm -hmm. be taking responses on a personal level and uh, you know as a church I hope um, to this. But you know it's it's not it's not my desire to walk together with with theolog with liberal theological development. You know, eventually I will stop. Yeah, and it's yeah. also Tom. It's very wishy-washy language, isn't it? It's like, what does it actually mean? Well, to it's never been together? unpacked. It's never been unpacked. Okay. That's never been unpacked. And also, the idea of radical Christian inclusion has never been unpacked. It's just something the Archbishop of Canterbury said once. Mm. You know, it hasn't got any more, you know, behind it than that, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, um, you could argue that Christianity, like Orthodox Christianity, is the most radically inclusive message of any sort of religion or world ideology because it's a message for everyone in the whole world you know that everyone just has to do the same thing which is repent and believe in the gospel and you can be part of the the christian church yeah, but yeah. there but you have to repent and believe in the gospel you know you, you what, and, what, and that's what, been part of the part, part from that part, part of the problem is on the the other side and i know a number of people on the other side have squirmed about this but there there is an inherent universalism and yeah. it's strange that when this red line is crossed, that universalism becomes very apparent. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they don't really uh, believe in sin. Full stop. Do they? I mean, can can they? How can they? No, you don't need a savior no. because I'm already all right. Yeah, I just God need an affirmer. I, yeah. I need enough, you know, someone to basically affirm me. Well, it's not Christianity. Yeah, no. I think also, you know, the word inclusion it has to sort of have some content, doesn't it? It has to mean you have to be included in something with content. That if the content is just inclusion, then you're just being included in nothing. You know, well, the, the, those who read the Church Times will know from the advert pages that inclusion has become code word because those adverts are full of uh, codes to tell you what kind of parish you're applying for, and if it says inclusive. It, it means essentially buying into uh, a progressivism. Yeah, it means a universalist. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's carry on for a minute. Oh, so wait, uh, just one more comment on that as well. You know, when she mm -hmm. says it's an agreed way forward, I mean, in what sense has this been agreed? I mean, the the the, the general synod was pretty split. I don't want to sound like a, a Ramona mm -hmm. here, but. Um, so I'm not one, but you know, it's it is a bit like that 52 48 thing, isn't it? It's like being on the other side of that. You think, well, well 
you know mm. it's, not, was... it's not really agreed is it it's it's that, it's that we've lost the vote and we're unhappy about it you know and it's so it's it's not really agreed in that sense it's, it's... I, i'm not even certain you know quite you know what what power synod has to sort of dictate this sort of thing to me you know why, why you know just because synod votes some way do i do i have to take any account of that do, i mean in what sense is that is that applicable to me i've always wondered this you know Synod can vote on whatever they like. I mean, as long as it doesn't contravene, as far as I'm concerned, my ordination oaths and my oath of affirmation uh, of, of obedience, then I, I can ignore it. Yeah, you well, know. they are giving you the option to ignore it, aren't they, Tom? It's just yeah. a question of the context which will change around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I get that. I get the difficulty. That. It's the difficulty, isn't it? No one. Yeah, they, I mean, that's exactly what they say. We're not forcing you to do anything, but that's. The, the well, no, because they, it seems to be they're trying to force me to go with radical Christian walking together in radical Christian inclu- inclusion. What mm. power does that have? Anyway, yeah, uh, we should we should move on. We should. Yeah, move on. Daniel, do you need to go? Um, in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's just finish the video. We've got another thirty seconds or so. Reached a milestone, but there's still more work to do. We recognise that the church still needs to attend to many other matters relating to what it means to be human. So that was the Archbishop of York and the Bishop of London. So the Archbishop of York said, we've reached a milestone, but there's still much more work to do. Again, it's, it's, not, said, it? it's, not, yeah. it's not said what work. Uh, but, and and uh, that milestone, you could actually say another metaphor is a lot of people that we're hearing would say, well, no, it's not a milestone. You've crossed a red line. Yeah, you've crossed, you've crossed a Rubicon, which you shouldn't have crossed. And it, again, mm. it's like, well, what does it mean? Because lots of people hear that and think, well, that means that we're one step closer to full same-sex marriage and again it's ambiguous it's not it's not it's not clear let's carry on we're thankful for all we've learned along this journey and we will go on seeking the fullness and unity and love together which only christ brings to us and has made us one i find it very ironic that that video ends with an appeal to oneness and unity because as far as i'm concerned this is a a move which is just going to cause division Mm. it is causing division within the church of england and within the the anglican Anglican communion and within the church catholic Mm. uh, worldwide it's it's and it would seem that he's you know jumped before he's been pushed that having gone to ghana yesterday you know he's started talking about well the instruments of the anglican communion its presidency maybe it shouldn't be so colonial and centered on canterbury and mother england um because the the two largest bodies within the communion uh Ga- you know gafcon and the global south have basically said we're not going to recognize your leadership mm. yeah. yeah well all, all good to 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 them to be honest mm. um the problem is that we end up as faithful ministers in a church that's then sort of probably if if they took leadership uh censored in some way impaired communion with with the with the wider anglican faithful and mm. again the, you know the, the the archbishop of canterbury has basically just dis, dis, has basically destroyed a um mm. a a godly sort of organic strong uh union of churches in for his own personal uh you know heterodoxy really yeah i mean it does it does seem to me like when i think about the history of the church of england i think it starts you know to my mind very very badly with with henry the eighth and, and thomas cromwell you know um killing and and torturing a lot of people and you know um despoiling uh the abbeys you know and monasteries whatever you think about that um but essentially it starts in a in a let's call it a controversial way right let's put it let's put it mildly and call it controversial but then it's sort of you know all these amazing all these amazing kind of spiritual uh, liturgical and social riches theological riches come from it and all this wonderful sort of spirituality and all the all the great stuff that's happened over the last um you know let's say 400 years and now i feel like i don't feel like i think we're living at the end of it i think we're living at we're living in the death throes of the church of england you know this 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 great and glorious church which has has given so much to the to the to the wider church and to the wider world i think I think this is, yeah, I think we're, I think we're at the end now because, because these kind of things, when you've got the Archbishop of Canterbury going to Ghana and saying, you know, maybe we shouldn't, maybe the primate shouldn't be in Canterbury. Maybe it should be somewhere else. Maybe it should be in Africa or maybe we should have sort of some, there was, I mean, it's quite complicated, isn't it? But he's sort of, he's sort of suggesting several different types of, um, 
uh, de- different focuses for unity you know one in rome but one also in sorry one in canterbury sorry not rome one in canterbury one in one in africa, freudian slip one in africa somewhere <laughs> and so on but but you know what i mean it's the, it's the end it's like the the church of england as we know it is the structure is it's going to change and it will it will fragment and it will become something that's that's no longer recognizably the church of england and um i you know i think the thing is we have to be um we have to be optimistic and and have faith that god is going to do something great for, through this you know and and orthodox christian uh, believers and ministers will find will find um the right path and be led by the spirit of god to the right path into fruitful ministry and and a fruitful outworking of their faith um and that that's you know we've got to approach that in faith and that has to be a good thing but at the same time we have to acknowledge the the death like experience that i think we're we're all entering into now um and and the thing which is so ironic to me is you know watching a video like that when you've got this kind of this 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 music which is all you know it's, it, <laughs> this this sort of speaks of redemption and healing and hope and and I'm just thinking this is completely opposite of what's happening this is about death you know this is about death and um and and rebirth you know but we're in the we're in the death moment now we're not in the you know mm. we're making progress this is a milestone we're seeking greater levels of unity we're walking together in oneness and um radical inclusion we're we're walking we're walking over the edge of the cliff you know Mm. and we're going to die and 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 those of us who are faithful will be reborn but that's you know that's the reality Mm. yeah yeah and it's quite sad Anyway, that's why we wanted, <laughs> didn't want to talk about this at the beginning of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Much easier right. to talk about balloons, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> new, and it's a new foe, inv- alien invasion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Daniel, do you, so we're going to do a question of the Rev, I think, to finish off. Do you want to stay for it or are you going to... You gonna I'll, I'll have to get going, I'm afraid. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for your time, Daniel. It's been great to have you on and uh, to get you and Tom together and to prove that you are not either the same person or had some kind <laughs> we, of... We don't coexist. Massive falling out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um okay daniel see you again soon okay take care all right god bless all right tom we've done all the uh the stuff now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show probably certainly everyone's it's certainly the musical highlight here we go thomas Time now for a bit of question the Rev. This is when people ask questions of the Revs and we answer them. It's a very simple format. Whether it works or not, it's not for us to say. Um, right. Dear Jamie, Tom and Daniel. Daniel's gone now, so sorry, it's just us two. I find myself in a situation and wonder if you'd be able to offer any words of wisdom or advice. I'm a radiographer, which means I x-ray people. And I work for the NHS. Last year, the NHS became fully inclusive. This is just filtered down to the trust I work within. This week, my trust has said that I am now required to ask all patients between the ages of 12 and 55 for certain examinations if they could be pregnant. I'm supposed to get everyone to sign a document confirming they're not. I previously only done this for women. I feel deeply uncomfortable about this, but have been told I have to do it as it's an obligation of my registration. Presumably, I would be reported to the Healthcare Professions Council, HCPC, who govern me and can strip me of my registration which would cause me to lose my job. I feel a little lost. During COVID, it was rammed down our throats to trust the science, follow the science, etc. Well, science tells me that a man has XY chromosomes, a penis and no ovaries or uterus, and therefore cannot get pregnant. I've already faced losing my job as I refused to have the vaccine and was so very nearly fired. I was harassed by so many people in my trust to get the jab and told I would lose my job. Now I feel I'm back there again. I work across two hospitals within my trust. One of my line managers at one of the hospitals is actually a trans woman. This makes it all the more awkward. She has gone through the full transition. The trust policy hasn't come from her, but she has to implement it. I don't want to offend her, but I don't know what to say to her. Any thoughts on this situation would be so great, gratefully received. Best wishes and so on. Oh, it's a big one, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, it's tricky. Um, yeah. But on the one hand, um, in fact, this doesn't sound like this has happened. Uh, 
So, uh, so if they were, for example, going to sort of consolidate everything down to one form that you gave to everyone and it had the same question on for everyone, it's like when I go to the dentists, I think I'm asked uh, if I, uh, you know, if I'm pregnant, not that it really mm. matters. Um, uh, because they just use, well, no, I'm not at the moment, actually. Thank you for asking, Jamie. Uh, um, but um, the, you know, so so they've just got one pool for everyone, and that's all right. It's, it's kind of like it's just there, isn't it? But this t- sounds like they, there's a separate form which is given out to women between 12 and 55. Uh, and uh, the one thing I would start by asking is, is, is sort of uh, the mind boggles as to why the NHS thinks that it's got the money for this. Like, you know, it times that out over everything. <laughs> you know, making men fill out individual forms to to, to say they're not pregnant it seems, it seems completely madness. You know, even if yeah. you're only losing a couple of pence each time, it's just time and effort. Um, what to do about it, though? I, I, it's hard to know, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, just, it makes me think of, um, you know, the whole live not by lies thing that yeah. Roger Ayer talks about with um Alexander Alexander Solzhenitsyn, you know, when he's saying not everyone can kind of go out into the public square and, you know, say the truth, you know, really explicitly. But what you can do is you cannot, you can choose not to participate in anything that you actively know is a lie, uh, not to say anything which is a lie or to uh, put your name to something which is a lie. Um, But you also have to be, it's another thing Jess says in that book, is that you have to be prudent. Um, and so I, you know, reading this, I, I my, I would of... probably subvert. It. I'd do it, but subvert it. Like when you hand it out to a man, just say, "Isn't this ridiculous?" Every time you do it, isn't this such a stupid thing to do? Yeah. Uh, every time you hand it out to a woman, do you know I have to hand these out to men these days? You know. Yeah, I, I think as well. Like to get somebody to sign a document saying they're not pregnant, I would just say I think that that doesn't fall foul of that dictum to live not by lies yeah. because you're not actually lying. Because men can't, obviously, can't be pregnant. Uh, it would be different if somebody was trying to get you to sign a document saying, you personally to sign, sign a document saying men can be pregnant or something like that. I suppose you might you might say that by giving the document, you're sort of implying that you think a man can be pregnant. But, but, you, don't, you, but say, you don't have to, though, do you? Like I say, if you said, you know, I, you know this, yeah. isn't this every time, every time, so this, isn't this ridiculous? Most people would agree with you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if and if they don't, then it is actually a protected uh, belief. Uh, so the, the NHS couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's one of those. I think it's one of those issues where I'd probably recommend just to hold your nose and do it. To be honest with you, uh, you know, there are many things where I where I wouldn't where I wouldn't say that. But I think in this case, you know, to me, it's not it's not lying to give someone a form which you know you know how they're going to sign it. You know they're going to sign and say I'm not pregnant if they're a man. So just treat it like a kind of strange administrative quirk. I know that's not all it is and I know what's behind it. And it must be very, I think it must be very difficult to work in this kind of environment where you're constantly being kind of pressurized into doing things that you're uncomfortable with, or you're in a situation where you know that people are, you know, they've got very different views to you and and they, they probably would dislike your views if you were to be honest about them. But I think in this case, you know, to me, that's not a hill worth dying on. I don't know whether you think that, Tom. That's just the way I see it. I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you, Jamie. I think um, let's keep the powder dry, <clears throat> subvert yes. it, subvert it if you if you can. Uh, but um, yeah, it is. It's obviously nonsense. It's obviously stupid, isn't it? I, I just, I just, I, the mind boggles is why the NHS needs to spend money on this. Write to your MP about it because they might be able to actually change things from a if they're sensible change things from a top level like why is this happening under a conservative government who knows well because yeah. they're not conservative but um i wouldn't hold that uh, much <laughs> um but there i think also you know and this might not be a very helpful thing to say but there is also obviously the question all of these things about you know long term you know is this a is this a, an environment that i can continue in long term or yeah. that i want to continue in uh even even short to medium term and you know is there is there a sense in which i could be doing stuff outside of my work uh, or within my work, where I could be actually looking for an environment which would be yeah. would be better uh, for me. <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah, exactly. like, retrain, like, do, retrain, do, some, do, some do nice something things. else. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that that's appropriate. And obviously, being a radiographer, and you know, you've got to train for years, and you've got a salary, and you know, it's a good thing as well. Like it's 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 a good. I should imagine a rewarding job helping people. Um, yeah, 
but in the end, at some point, then something might come where you just can't, you know, with all integrity, keep it up. Yeah, and that, uh, and only yeah. you can know that. And that that is another theme of um, of Rod Dreher's work as well. You know, with the Benedict option and stuff like that. Like we have to think creatively about the industries that we're involved in and whether whether our participation in them long term is going to be feasible, or whether we need to we need to um, equip ourselves with with different skills which can serve at least as a backup. You know, if these environments do become too hostile and and eventually um and eventually become environments in which we can't work at all so i'm not i'm not suggesting that for this person but you know that that is something that's um good to think about tom should we just finish with this email it won't take it would only take a couple it's a, of it's a nice email, to, um, yeah. do you want to read it if i've, I've read go that on, go on them. um so I think we can say it's Harry. So thanks, Harry. Harry. Thanks, yeah. Harry. Hi, gents. Hello, gents. Thank you for an amazing event on Saturday. It goes without saying it was a successful event for many reasons. Uh, and he lists some, so that's great. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. You, you, you the, did... host, the host yeah. are the main, yeah. the main thing he lists there. They're the yeah, first yes. and yeah. the guest, uh, et cetera. Uh, but we all, I do remember having a chat, Harry, so it's good. Um, uh, he says, uh, thank you for getting... Uh, to know so many of us uh, and sends more sort of um, uh, more of his appreciation. So we're glad that we can do something to help you, um, help you all actually. Um, that's why we started this. And uh, you know, the fact it's having an impact is uh, really moving to me. And I, I know uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad you like the Merck as well. Uh, so that's good. Um, I like it. Uh, <laughs> even the one with my face on it. Um, Are you uh, this email? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just sort of summarising. It's just highly, it's highly kind of glossed. It's like a kind of medieval Bible, with, which is mostly gloss, glossary. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. At the start of the event on Saturday, Jamie mentioned that he didn't want the event to have a feeling of corporate takeover. And I wanted to mention this because the whole atmosphere of the event was very special. Um, I know Jamie's looking to rely on the podcast going forward, and I pray that you'll keep the spirit of it as it is now, not overly monetized or sponsored, but genuine and real. Of course, we will. Uh, don't worry. Um, uh, that's uh, not a problem. It only costs a small amount of money to get your email read out on Irreverent. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, well, you, so, you enter a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. You, okay, you yeah. give us 50 quid and we put you in there. <laughs> that's a joke. Uh, Just it's a joke. We're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, so it goes on to say, most of my experience in the Church of England has been pretty poor my whole life. As a reasonably new Christian who found faith through an evangelical church, most of my knowledge about it has been made has been through the media or my grandma, who raised in a brethren church, had never had a polite thing to say about you. Uh, I had to laugh when we sang Jerusalem at the end of the meeting because she always insists it's a stupid song because, of course, Jesus didn't walk in England. That's a very good point. Uh, I, 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 I mean, it was, it was quite rousing to sing it. It was good. It was, uh, but it, and it's a vision, isn't it? It's a vision of the future where Jesus will walk in, you know, the whole, on the whole land again. Uh, but uh, and building a new Jerusalem in this country. But yes, I do agree. It's, it's a series of rhetorical questions. The answer to which is well, the no. second, the second verse is not a series it's of rhetorical not, no, questions. And I, the second verse is the verse I really love. I think it's, yeah. I think that combination. I think it's parry, isn't it? That combination of the music. I think it's parry. Um, the composer of the music and William Blake's words in the second verse of Jerusalem to me that's uh, that's like an artistic high point of all culture yep. yeah, I just don't I just don't uh, you know that to me is like one of the so, high points of human culture that I'm aware of it's the most it's the most mu moving and beautiful it, it, it was and especially moving in that room you know having yeah. had that discussion uh, a real you know call to action uh, now uh, so if Tom ever finishes building his chaos space marines maybe we can have a game i'm always up for that anyway, i was going to show this one off because i've got there warhammer so this, yeah my warhammer there you go nice yeah for, for audio listeners tom is showing a piece of warhammer to the camera this is a new low some would call it <laughs> for a reference others would call it's it a highlight that's <laughs> quite a lot of modelers in in the community i've been approached by a number All of right. different people uh i think i've shown models before i, I do it i've done oh, it for maybe years shown a ship, but, um, yeah. a ship yeah. so he's saying here that he suggests um, have a game of warhammer and film yeah. it for our youtube channel i don't think we'll film it i don't think we'll film it you could start um, a new you and harry could start a youtube channel i could and we could. could plug it. We'll plug it, but I don't think we should put it on the Reverend <laughs> no, YouTube it's, channel. It's, I mean, it's not our thing, really, is it? Faith, Current Affairs, Warhammer. And Warhammer. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, it was uh, fantastic. We, yeah. So here we, we go. Finally, it was fantastic to meet you all, including Johanna, who's absolutely lovely. Well, I can't fault that. 
Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And uh, thank you for your offers, Harry. Um, bless you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, we appreciate that. It's a really nice email and we really, you know, we do appreciate um, everyone who came and it was, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, the one thing I, I may have said this last week, but the one thing with the live event I just find crazy is like so many people obviously want to speak to you and you just feel like you have very little time to give people yeah. really because you've got you know everyone wants to speak to you so you can just sort of say hello listen to them for a second or two and then you've got to kind of move on yeah. and it's crazy i mean i can't imagine i was thinking you know can you imagine what it would be like to be jordan peterson and to be at an event where you had sort of thousands of people there and you know they all want to come and meet you after the event or something like that i mean we had 200 people at the event and it felt you know it feels crazy doesn't it? it you know I, I, but it was it was good i'm already looking forward to our next one i hope we do another one yeah um, well we will we will i think we need you know a bit of decompression first and you know yeah. give it give it a bit of time you know what i'd like to do actually and cool. i'd be interested to hear people's um views on this but like that event was a big day event wasn't it so it took you know that took a lot of pre um, preparation and organization mostly on johanna and her and andrew and her friends parts um but um you know we could do something a lot less uh, intense like we could just do a live recording of the podcast somewhere and invite an audience we could even do it in a church or something like that we could do it on an evening or something so that would be you know we we don't have to always do these massive events um yeah so who knows yeah. maybe we'll maybe we'll do stuff like that in the future yeah um when I when or would, I or would, or would maybe uh, an evening event rather than a day event as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That. That's what I said. Like we could yeah. do the podcast as an as um an evening event, couldn't we? Okay, yeah, we could. Yeah. Or what we could do is we could do like um a sort of uh VIP audience. So we could have dinner in a church with say like twenty five people, and then they could be the audience for the podcast, and the tickets could be, what do you think, two hundred quid. <laughs> I, I just don't know Jimmy that's that sounds a bit commercial um he's joking maybe he's maybe joking, it's but, slightly too high um, maybe the cost yeah. would be slightly too high I think um, so anyway we can source something up people be, be, quite, I think it's quite a good idea I think it's yeah. a nice idea um, the tickets would be cheaper but you know yeah um and also uh, but also the um the other thing is like do invite us so like we did a lovely event in Colchester so if your church is putting on an event and you think your reverends could have something to do then we are you know we're yeah. happy to do that yeah. also if anyone wants us to do any like festivals this summer send us send us an email because i think we'd be be quite up for it you know right. doing a festival i mean I, yeah so i haven't consulted with you about that but i'd be up for it yeah so, yeah going to a nice festival i mean come on tom festival all right, all right. Okay. including the name isn't it i yeah. mean it's, it's fun it's festive yeah all right <laughs> we should we should go we should go i need to go anyway uh, do you want uh, to do it's a, been very long yeah oh i should say just before we do the prayer uh, if you like the podcast do support us on patreon patreon.com uh patreon yeah sorry uh, patreon or, or buy me a coffee uh, i meant to plug our website irreverendpod.com irreverendpod.com you can go on there support us on patreon become a monthly uh, subscriber or uh, leave us uh, a message on buy me a coffee and, and a one-off donation but we really really do appreciate that and uh, as harry said in the email soon um i will be much more reliant on this podcast for my income uh than i currently am so really appreciate any uh support and help for running the podcast and also my future um income so that really helps so thank you go on tom all right so let's bless heavenly father bless all those who've listened to this podcast we bless um harry and uh the um the writer of the uh, question the rev question um, pray for discernment and clarity for him and protection in his job uh in his, from the sort of spiritual forces of evil that work in the secular world um, we pray for all the issues that we've talked about. We pray for the Church of England that might turn from folly and embrace life. And we pray for um, this flawed world that it might know your blessing, that you might come again and set wrongs to right. Amen. Amen. Uh, I should say for clarity, Tom, that uh, we've just... Um seen an example of a, a mild case of everyday sexism there because the uh writer of the email was in fact a woman so oh um, sorry just just so you know i don't i don't actually think you're sexist tom well, uh, i didn't see a name so i just no no well i anonymized it for there we are. uh there you are. know to protect her identity but yeah it's a, it is a woman just to be clear we don't want to well, be well, do we don't apologize want to gender. that was actually a gen genuinely you just genuinely misgendered someone so it does show it does show that it's actually possible. Sex them. Well, I didn't have any information. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Uh, good. Well, uh, yeah. bless her. 
All right, Tom. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time as always. Thanks to everyone for listening. We're looking forward to being with you again, as always, in the next episode. So bye, Tom. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.